Okay, good morning everybody and thanks for uh, joining us here to talk about the SESI report on construction costs for the defective concrete uh, block grant scheme. So to introduce who we have on the panel this morning, myself Shirley Coulter, the CEO of the Society of Chartered Surveyors Ireland, and we have Kevin Brady, who is a Chartered Quantity Surveyor and Chair of the SESI Quantity Surveyor Professional Group Committee, and Michal Mann, another Chartered Quantity Surveyor and Chartered Project Manager, and he's the immediate past president of SESI. So we are the professional representative body for the surveying profession in Ireland, and we represent 12 different professional groups or, or disciplines, and you can see them there in the, in the table. So we also are the statutory registrar for the protected titles of quantity surveyor and building surveyor, and we do act in the public interest, setting and maintaining the highest standards of competence. So we do provide impartial authoritative advice on key issues, and this is one uh, such example. So in recognition of the cost uh, construction cost expertise of the society, and um, people may be familiar with the number of reports that we've done around the real cost of construction of three bed semis and apartments, for example, the society was asked by the Department of Housing to provide uh, up to date live construction cost information for the defective concrete block grant scheme. So we did uh, agree to do that. We said that we would do it in a standalone report separate to our other construction cost reports to provide independent data. And we would do it both for the demolition and rebuilding of homes affected, which is option one, and that we would provide a cost methodology for the other remediation options two to five. So this report, very importantly, is based on the parameters of the scheme that was announced on the 30th of November. So we do not have any role in the setting of the parameters of the scheme. So we don't have any role in deciding what building regulations apply, whether foundations are included or excluded, for example. And further to that, we have absolutely no role in the setting of the grant. We received no payment for doing this work. Uh, we did it entirely pro bono through our volunteer members, and we did that um, in the public interest. We acknowledge uh, the contribution of all stakeholders that provided valuable information. So that includes um, MICA homeowners through the MICA Action Group, the department, local authorities, and of course, our members working across the Northwest region. So we extend our sincere thanks to our Chartered Quantity Surveyor and Building Surveyor members who contributed to this report, and uh, in particular, the considerable efforts of the Defective Concrete Block Working Group within the SESI that did an extremely detailed analysis. So the terms of reference then, it is clear and they're appended to the report that will be published at half 11, and, and all of this is under embargo until 11.30. They do include the costs for demolition and reconstruction, a concrete path around the house, disconnection and reconnection of utilities, making good to the driveway and garden, professional fees, VAT at 13.5% on building costs and at 23% on professional fees. Costs do not include, because they're outside of the parameters of the scheme, new foundations, A-rated or NZ homes, content such as carpets and furniture, outbuildings, garages, boundary walls, septic tanks, etc. So the methodology, how did we approach um, drafting this report? Looking at demolish and rebuild remediation option one costs, uh, we did up very specific updated pricing schedules. They were drafted by our expert group. We then identified a significant number of chartered quantity surveyors that were based uh, largely in, in Donegal and working across the Northwest to bring really live and relevant data from the affected regions. So all of those members that were uh, involved were all volunteers and they are very experienced in residential development and specifically in have professional experience of MICA impacted houses. So the returns were made, those um, pricing schedules were completed in February. So it's very, very up-to-date and relevant cost data. Those returns were then analysed by our expert working group. And we had then even more input from additional chartered quantity surveyors uh, again. Additional cost data was received from the department and from the MICA, MICA Action Group. And we reviewed all of that uh, cost data as well. And the result is average rebuilding rates for eight house types that were specified in the terms of reference. So there is four estate type houses and four one-off homes, and they are all clearly included in, the, in one of the tables in the report. So the, uh, we, it is based on the pricing brief that is, are shown in the next couple of slides, and I'm going to hand over to Kevin now, who will uh, give us more detail around the figures. My name's Shirley. So as Shirley outlined there, we have uh, specifically looked at option one, demolition and rebuild, uh, and the costs associated with the same in line with the government's uh, terms of reference to us. 
the pricing brief that we have um, followed is outlined in the next two slides. And in summary, um, what, what is included in that brief uh, is as follows. Demolition of the existing house down to the top of foundations. Um, in terms of substructure, so below ground works, we have included for rising block work walls, um, hardcore insulation, concrete floor slabs, um, et cetera, um, as outlined on the table there. In terms of the superstructure, so everything above ground, we've included for block work built um, um, units um, with partial brickwork. We've allowed for partial brickwork in selected areas with block work and stud partition internal walls in the actual property. We've allowed for new chimneys, um, et cetera, depending on the particular house type. In terms of the first floor and the roof, um, we've allowed for the timber structure associated with both. We've allowed for um, um, uh, fiber cement roof slates to be uh, put on the house, um, the insulation in the attic space um, and the timber work on, on each of the floors. On completions, um, if you could click over there, Shirley. Um, in terms of completions and finishes, so what we've allowed for in, in them, in summary, is a, a PVC um, double glazed windows, render finishes externally, tiling to kitchen and wet areas um, and in bathroom areas, um, kitchen units, uh, fireplaces, built-in wardrobes, um, plumbing and heating and electrics, um, and sanitary fittings. The site works, what, what has been allowed in the site works element is localised drainage runs um, and connection to existing drainage um, within the cartilage of the site, um, new concrete footpaths uh, and localised uh, reinstatement of uh, driveways and um, grass seeded uh, areas with, around the house. Preliminaries and other fees we've included for um, um, we include for so obviously management um, and supervision costs associated with uh, a builder building, um, rebuilding these units, uh, disposal and skips and waste removal, insurances, health and safety, um, overheads, VAT um, on building works as well. We've also allowed for disconnection and reconnection of utilities and, and costs associated with that. The professional fees uh, associated with, with the rebuilding to include building surveyor, um, architect, engineer, and a quantity surveyor, and a VAT associated with the same. We've also included for fees for uh, the certification under building control regulations 2014. The cost exclusions then, um, in line with the terms of reference, the costs uh, that are not included in, in, in our, our um, rebuild values uh, are in terms of the soft costs would be uh, planning consent fees, so um, applications for planning, etc., would be ex uh, costs associated with that would be excluded. Professional fees for eligibility under the, the DCB grant scheme, fees associated with the certificate of remediation required under the, the, the same scheme as well. The hard costs excluded from, from our rebuild values, as we outlined earlier, the new uh, foundations, if they were required, uh, they are excluded. NZEB rated uh, homes, so current rated, um, A rated houses, etc. That specification is not included in our costs. Contents such as carpets, timber floors, loose furniture, uh, curtains, blinds, etc. They are all excluded. Removal and storage costs of, of, um, of loose furniture or any items within the house is also excluded. Salvage costs, so salvaging windows, doors, um, or, or anything within the actual uh, house is excluded, and that's in, in line with our terms of reference from the government. The septic tank uh, treatment treatments and, and rebuild works associated with that, that's also excluded. Boundary walls and fences are excluded, and outbuildings and garages are also excluded. So in terms of the costs, um, what I would say first is that the um, costs we have, have provided are for eight house types and the results are, are outlined in the next two slides. Um, what we have included for is actual house type areas. So the approximate house size in meters squared is based on our case studies used for the actual survey. And the survey returns that we got are, are significant. Um, as Shirley outlined, um, and they're from our members in, in, 
and members um, in that area. Would also remind you that the costings are on the basis of pre-2008 uh, building regulations and the costs that are included here are, are on the basis of market rates, uh, 2022 market rates and on the basis of no embetterment to the actual homeowner. And our survey is based on real and hard cost data from our members and accordingly the figures presented today are blended averages across the data set which returned in our opinion the best uh, best represents uh, the actual construction costs. So as you can see from the table, uh, the results of the four estate type houses range from 1,690 per square meter up to 17, approximately 1,700 per square meter. If we click the next page then. On the one-off houses, um, the costs range from 1,583 uh, per square meter up to 1,766 per square meter. I'll now hand, hand you over to uh, Michal to, to take us through options two to five. Uh, the remediation and salvage uh, salvage items. Sorry, I was on mute there for a second. Um, so look, uh, it's it's quite I'm uh, conscious it's quite a technical presentation, and uh, this doesn't get much easier to partial remediation either. Just so option one is the options is a full rebuild as uh, uh, under the scheme. Options two to five. Just to recap briefly, they involved partial demolition like we, it, it, maybe option two was demolish and rebuild external walls down to foundation option three was demolish and rebuild external walls to the top of a rising wall or to the foundation to the ground floor uh, option four was demolish an outer leaf only and option five was demolish and rebuild outer leaf of affected walls only and re-render sorry i know that's all quite technical i hope most of you have the the uh, the, uh, the scheme in front of you in, in any event so but we studied this in detail. So option one, we have dealt with, as Kevin has outlined. Option two to five, in our view, they are very, very um, site specific. We looked at it in detail and how we could possibly collate accurate costs. And we came to the conclusion after, after much deliberation that it was not going to be possible to, out, to calculate the cost of these works and express it as a cost per square foot of the floor area of the house. I hope that makes sense. It's just, um, it, it, it is our view that um, each house will bring its own individual challenges in relation to how you will technically be able to undertake these options, options two to five. And it is our view currently, just to recap that we cannot, um, you cannot express that as a, a, a over the growth floor area of the house you cannot just say it's going to be 50 euros a square foot or some figure to uh, to uh, undertake a part two or five or remediation option two to five because it is so site specific what we have offered what we have offered is that if we uh, were given case studies and structural engineering's uh, calculations and drawings and designs that we could look at the costs and uh, uh, for site specific uh, projects. I hope that makes sense. It's it's a little technical, but I hope that I hope that makes sense. So, uh, on to salvage, um, please. Um, so we were asked to look at the possibility of the reuse of existing house components uh, as part of of the of the review. Um, again, it's quite similar to the uh, remediation options two to five. Um, it is our view that the salvage um, options on uh, houses are very site specific. In some instances, for example, it may be possible to safely take out windows and reuse them. It may be on internal doors or certain other elements within the uh, property. This then could come down to uh, the, how old is the boiler? Is it worth saving? How, how old are the windows, et cetera, et cetera? How do you store them? And what's the cost associated with storage for each specific um, property? So again, we're of the view that currently that uh, we, 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 we uh, could not 
undertake that analysis as it is so site specific and project specific and uh, the options that Kevin has outlined under option one as he has said exclude the reuse it's all new components that we've taken in accordance with the specification as has been outlined in detail by Kevin so I hope that makes sense and uh, on remediation and salvage and we'll, when we come to the uh, Q&A at the end I'll, I'll gladly come back to it thank you uh, over to Kevin again Thanks, Michal. So um, the government have asked the society to review and update the costs annually, which we have agreed to do so. However, we do we, we do have to consider how this will take place and the best approach, um, and we will be reverting uh, on that once that approach is agreed. We'd also just note that um, the society uh, produce um, other um, industry cost reports and that these should not be um, uh, compared to this, this particular uh, report. This is a standalone uh, report specific to defective concrete block uh, houses and the remediation works associated with the same. So, 